Okay, we got a 2008 Freightliner Columbia here with a Detroit 14 liter that's having regen problems. So we're going to try to do a forced regen and get some turbo actuator codes. We'll see if it'll uh, clear itself because it was 15 below zero and I had a feeling that the fuel was gelled up and going to the line to the doser valve that comes into the outlet side of the turbo. So let's go ahead and do what it says here, cycle the clutch switch. We did that, and then you confirm that. And then it tells you to release the parking brake and set it again. All right, we did that. Gear selection neutral. All right, I don't have the cruise on or that shit, so there we go. This is a noisy one. These Detroits are noisy when they read you in. See, our diesel oxidation catalyst temperature here is 300 degrees. We want that at our target temperature of 940 around 900 to 1000 degrees what you want to see when you're regenning. So we'll sit here this will sometimes this takes about two hours see if they'll do a regen, but if it keeps going turbo actuator codes, then it won't ever let it complete the regen. It'll keep kicking it out. What happened on this thing was that the actuator motor, which is over here, took it off. And it's pretty much, if you got a Dodge Cummins in your pickup, a 6.7 with a variable geometry turbo. Uh, even on these freight liners, like this, this vintage is pretty much the same kind of setup. You got your variable geometry actuator here. What I did is I took it off. I did a travel test with my laptop and it failed the travel test. So then I I pulled it off. And what I'll do just to see and just to double check myself, I'll pull the actuator off the turbo. I leave the key on, that way it's holding it in its position where it's supposed to be. And then I'll take a paint marker and I'll mark the gear and then I'll mark the uh, housing. And then I'll turn the key off and I'll go check it and then I'll turn the key back on and then usually if it's working you'll see where it has moved it won't come back in the same spot because you'll have to calibrate it with the actuator or with your laptop to put it back on just like an ISX and it never moved so the motors burn out in this but what caused that to fail this is just like on your ISX this moves back and forth to move your cone back and when I first started to move this it was real hard to move I mean I had to I had to tap on it with a hammer to get it freed up to move and you can hear how noisy it is there's a cone down inside here let's see if we can see that yeah, you can't, all you can see is the turbine wheel on a turbo but uh, I have cleaned these up and put them back together and got away with it for a while. Uh, usually, when these start going on these on these truck turbos, they're they're history. Time to change the turbo. So I got a guy uh, over in Medford right now picking up a turbo, three thousand bucks, and he's on his way back. And we're gonna reinstall the turbo tonight and fire this thing back up and do a forced regen and see if we can get him back on the road. So that's the update on this. I'll uh, be back with you in the next segment when we're uh, hopefully pulling around the shop. Okay, Thanks. I thought I'd go over the uh, removal of this turbo. Uh, and then the next video we'll uh, cover the reinstallation of the new turbo on it and what a guy needs to do there. Um, 
basically, uh, this is your mounting flange, it goes your exhaust manifold here. Here's your coolant lines, feeds your actuator and your turbo. It's a water cooled turbo, and the actuator is water cooled too. To remember that, so you have to drain your coolant. This ain't like the old turbos where you can just, you don't really have to drain anything, you just pull your turbo off. You gotta drain your coolant system down. Sometimes you can drain five gallons out of it, just as long as you can get it down far enough to where you're below the level. I drained 10 gallons out of this one to get it down this far. But uh, here's your uh, EGR cooler. I had to take this water tube line and get back far enough to get this nut off here. This is These are 18 millimeter. Uh, one thing I really recommend, you'll notice these have flat o-ring face fittings on them on all the water fillings and the oil lines and shit like that. There's, there's a little flat face, go, go, get, go to your hydraulic shop or something, get you a flat face o-ring kit and change those o-rings when you when you put this thing back together and this this turbo here had the uh had the drain line so you got to take your drain line take this hose clamp down here loose and then once you get the mounting flanges and all that loose but you can pop that out of there and just pull up on the turbo but uh there's a clamp over here an exhaust clamp there it is right here you'll take that loose take this exhaust clamp loose uh hold your down pipe on to your uh, actual exhaust pipe and then uh, see what else you'll have your your fuel line that's your fuel line coming into your dosing valve and here's another your doser valve that's another thing that's water cooled here's your water line for your there's a supply and return going to the uh, doser valve here's the other one you have to take both of those off, and all these are flat-faced O-ring. And see what else is there. Basically, just take all the lines off. I mean, they're kind of hard to get to. You'll have to get a nine. I got a nine-inch extension and an eighteen millimeter, and I got my cordless impact in here. You can. I've done them with a half-inch drive ratchet too. You can get these bottom. You'll have to come up through the bottom. You know, if you got a freight liner, but if you got a if you got an extended hood, Pete. Let's see, I'm trying to think, can you get a Detroit in an extended hood peat anymore? Yeah, I think you can, so, I don't know, things over the years have changed so much with the truck industry that you can't, you used to be able to get a cat coming through a Detroit and anything you wanted, and now they got the Packard, and they got the, the Maxi Force International Motor, and a bunch of weird shit out anymore, so, um, let me see if there's anything else we can cover on the disassembly of this thing, make sure you go easy with that you know breaking stuff loose and if it feels like it's gonna break don't you know just keep working it or you know penetrating oil or something to get it loose and the other thing if you guys want to take your actuator off and you do have the software be really really careful with these bolts on these actuators because this one here man you can see where I had an air hammer and I was vibrating on it while I had tension on this and I finally got it to where it would start turning in there but what happens is this is a steel bolt and they go through this aluminum housing and they get electrolysis and then they basically weld themselves to the to housing I mean it really wasn't stuck down here it was stuck in the housing so but here's that six bolt flange I take that off after I take the uh, turbo out and when you when you take all these off you'll have to take all your lines and fittings and and stuff off and change those over to your new turbo um, see now this Detroit turbo is coming with the actuator the ISX's don't come with the actuator all the ones that I've got came you had to buy an actuator separately and then you know had to cal you had to do the installation procedure where it holds it in place and then you put it on and do the calibrate travel tests and, and then away it goes but uh, get you this six bolt flange or the down pipe uh, hooks up to your turbo hot housing. Uh, it should your your new turbo will come with the uh, temperature sensor. Yeah, that's a temperature sensor, and uh, it'll come with your turbine speed sensor already in it. Here's your turbine speed sensor right here. And you'll have to take your drain line off, and you'll take both of these fittings off the bottom too, and swap those over to your new turbo. Uh, the heat shield it'll be on there. 
Um, here's your dosing valve right here. That's your doser valve. It's pretty much set up like a like the 08s, 09s, ISXs. Now the 08s and 089 ISXs, they had a little dowel right here that lined up with your hot housing. This doesn't. So I just know which way it goes, but if you can, if you want to, you can take a paint marker and mark it and clock it, but it doesn't really didn't do much good to clock it when you get in a new turbo and you're putting it on a new turbo. So there's disassembly on that and shouldn't be too bad so all right guys well next video we'll show putting it back on there in the fourth regen thanks